and Neil deGrasse Tyson are today's most world-renowned leading scientists who are highly revered in today's society. These two men are also the main key players in promulgating the heliocentric religion in hope to cause Christians to doubt the validity of the Bible. So, for example, if you, if you knew nothing about science and you read, say, the Bible, the Old Testament, which in Genesis is an account of nature, that's, that's what that is, and I said to you, give me your description of the natural world based only on this. You would say the world was created in six days and that stars are just little points of light, much lesser than the sun. And in fact, they can fall out of the sky, right? Because that's what happens during, during the um, revelation. One of the signs that yeah. the second coming is that the stars will fall out of the sky and land on Earth. So it's even right that means you don't know what those things are. You have no concept of what the actual universe is. So everybody who tried to make proclamations about the physical universe based on Bible passages got the wrong answer. <laughs> so what happened was when science discovers things and you want to stay religious or you want to continue to believe that the Bible is, is unerring, what you would do is you would say, well, let me go back to the Bible and reinterpret it. Then you'd say things like, oh, they didn't really mean that literally. They meant that figuratively. So this whole sort of reinterpretation of the fig how figurative the poetic passages of the Bible are came after science showed that this is not how things unfolded. And so the educated religious people are perfectly fine with that. It's the fundamentalists who want to say that the Bible is the literally, literal truth of God that, and want to see the Bible as a science textbook who are knocking on the science doors of the schools trying to put that content in the science room. Hi Bill, my name is Chris Slade and one of my goals in life is to help bridge the gap between science and the modern Christian. What is there that I could say to help convince others that the creation story is likely just a story that was told to people who wouldn't have understood the complexities of science as we do today? I just want to show people that their religious beliefs don't need to be dependent on ignoring science. Chris, uh, your religious beliefs don't need, don't depend on ignoring science. Yeah, well, you hope not. So well, just from my point of view, Chris, keep in mind, I'm a mechanical engineer. I took nothing but physics. I love science. Science is what enabled us to create this computer communication system and this electronic infrastructure. Without science, you couldn't do this. And you use the word Christian. So, so the question is, if, if you have a religious tenet, if you hold a point of view that excludes something about modern science, I don't think the burden is on scientists or engineers to provide you a comfortable link. The link is for you. You have to reckon the facts, as we call them, with uh, some belief system that is incompatible with it. An example that I think everybody would eventually find ourselves discussing would be geology the age of the earth. You know, a couple years ago, I debated a guy who insists that the earth is 6,000 years old. That's completely wrong. That's obviously wrong. And the way we know it is wrong was a centuries was a result of centuries of study. So if you have a belief system that is incompatible with modern geology, the really, Chris, the problem is for the person trying to argue the earth is extraordinarily young, not for the people who have studied the world around us and understand it. But there's nothing there that I have seen in the Bible that informs modern science. Uh, with one possible exception, there's, in some translations that I've read, there's reference to 22 sevenths for being the distance around a circle, the value of pi, and that's pretty close. That's pretty close. It's not, it doesn't go past three digits, but it's pretty close. Okay. So these, the people who wrote the Bible were, they were literate, but they were not literate in the modern scientific sense. So you have to reckon that, man. I can't, I can't get in there. The earth's not 6,000 years old, never gonna be. Uh, and, and, and share your community and celebrate it, carry on. 
Now, another one of their well-received teachings, which they use also to cause doubt in the Bible, is the idea that we live on a spinning ball. And according to them, this argument is proven, which therefore makes the Bible invalid and their science as the proven truth. We have a saying, science, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. So I am now going to make a wild, way out, extraordinary claim. The world is round. So our curvature of the Earth horizon model is science. Watch the ships sail away. They don't disappear all at once. Now first, the bottom will disappear. See, the bottom of the ship is gone. Now we can see midway up, and then the whole thing disappears. Now, ships came back. They didn't fall off the table. So people realized that the world is curved. I mean, it's a big curve, but it's curved. So the process of testing claims, the world is flat, the world is round, is what we call science. Now, if you have a claim that can't be tested, that's what we call pseudoscience. The difference between pseudoscience and regular science is whether or not you can test it. The flat Earth, well, that didn't stand up to tests. The round Earth did. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. The world is round. Hey, what's up, Neil? I got like a super important question uh, for you that I've been wondering like my whole life. Okay, is the world round or flat? Because if so, if the, if the world is round, why isn't the water falling out into the space, out into space? Mikhail, you ask a very important question. This concept had eluded all of humanity for centuries. Everyone thought Earth was flat. Why? Because it looked flat. And they posed the same arguments you did. If it was round, stuff would fall off on the other side. You can't have people standing upside down on a round Earth. Here's the thing. We thought Earth was flat before we had seagoing vessels that went beyond the horizon, recognizing that there has to be a curve there, because the ship doesn't always stay in view. So Columbus, when he set sail, the ship eventually disappeared. And you can chase after him, and you can keep disappearing. You can keep doing this. This would count as evidence that Earth's surface was curved. Okay, as you can see here with the naked eye, we can't see the boat. But watch what happens when we take a telescope or a camera with a good zoom lens. The boat comes right back into view. It didn't disappear over a curved body of water. It's right there. And it'll always be right there with plenty of ocean right behind it. Now let's pan back out to our regular eye vision. And about right here, we can't see the boat anymore. It looks like it went over a body of curved water. Same thing right here. No boat. You can't see the boat. But watch what happens when we zoom in with the telescope. The boat comes right back into view, proving that the boat does not go over a body of curved water. This guy is lying to you. Science is lying to you. Now, this guy is a world-known physicist, and I just proved him wrong. You can think whatever you want to think, but I just showed you evidence. He's a liar. We thought Earth was flat before we had seagoing vessels that went beyond the horizon, recognizing that there has to be a curve there. Now, just in case the globe tards say the boat videos are fake, here's you some more irrefutable evidence.
Now these individuals are the ones telling us that we should trust the science. Their science is what we need to move forward. But how can one be expected to trust their science when the very logic which they use to try and prove their heliocentric doctrine can clearly be refuted? A fellow Seventh-day Adventist brother also did his test and showed it to be flawed. Even many have reported to have seen the Chicago skyline from the Indiana Dunes, which is 50 miles away. This could not be possible if we lived on a ball. There has to be some level of curvature, but there is not. Nobody can detect this curvature. Nobody can see this curvature. Therefore, clearly showing that there is no curvature and we do not live on a spinning ball. They have lied to us. So why the lie? I mean, it seems so trivial to the human mind for one to lie about the shape of the earth. And furthermore, if they did do this, why should it matter to us? Well, friends, it certainly does matter if the Bible is telling us something completely different. You see, friends, when we trace the history of the heliocentric religion, you find that all the founders of this religion, which involved Sir Isaac Newton, were all a part of this mystery school of Babylon and heavily involved in the occult. All this can be traced back even as far as Egypt, the Babylonians, the Greeks, even Pythagoras. Now, it is a well-known fact that the ancient Babylonians, all the mystery religions, worshipped the stars. The stars were the gods. We even see this through astrology. However, in particular, the sun was the chiefest of them all. And that's why God warned his people not to have any part in it. And it's the same today with heliocentrism. It's really sun worship. Now don't take my word for it, but we will let Neil deGrasse Tyson explain this. I am, we are stardust. Yes. What does that mean? For me, the most astonishing fact is that the molecules that comprise our body are traceable, are traceable to the crucibles of the centers of stars that manufactured these elements from lighter versions of themselves and then exploded, scattering this enrichment across the galaxy into gas clouds that would later collapse to form next generation star systems. One of those star systems was ours. These atoms and molecules are in us because in fact the universe is in us. And we are not only figuratively, but literally stardust. So we essentially arose from the stars. And remember, the sun is the main star in the solar system. So in that effect, we were birthed from the sun, which in effect makes the sun star our god, our creator. Heliocentrism, helo, is another word for the sun god that was also worshipped in ancient times. So friends, when we teach heliocentrism, the idea that the earth is spinning around the sun, we are actually promulgating sun worship. I know it sounds unbelievable, but remember, based on heliocentrism, the earth's rotation is due to the sun's gravitational pull. Therefore, it is the sun that is holding us together and the existence of the earth is due to the magical pull of the sun. And the sun must have come first in order for our earth to exist and spin around this star. Therefore, men are giving glory to the sun as the creator. Friends, this is where sun worship stems from. That's why God clearly tells us through the Holy Writ that this is impossible. He makes a purposefully distinction as according to Genesis story of creation, the earth, which is the dry land, 
was created before the sun. And the sun he placed above the earth, inside the firmament. God placed the sun, the moon and the stars in the firmament. When we understand and believe this simple creation story, we find the idea of a rotating ball spinning around the sun is impossible. Furthermore, when we read the second commandment, we are clearly told, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. And you know, when we create these models of the solar system, the planets, which we are saying is in the heavens, we are actually going against the second commandment. He tells us not to make any of these images. Continuing on, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Interesting. We are told under the earth is water, not endless space. In fact, the Bible tells us this earth is surrounded by the waters, the great deep. Again, this is contrary to what we are told in the modern day science schools. He tells us, verse 5, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So friends, this is pretty serious. What Satan is doing in this is replacing the things pertaining to how God created this world according to God's word, the Bible, with this new religion. It's the word of God as always versus the word of Satan. They tell us we came through evolution whose beginning point is from the stars. The stars formed us. Whereas God tells us he God created man and woman and he did this by speaking the word. There was no evolutionary process. They tell us the earth is spinning but God tells us the earth is fixed and stationary and it's the sun that's moving. They tell us the earth is a spear, it's a ball but God tells us the earth is a fat circular shape with a firmament described as a tent around us. They tell us outside the earth's atmosphere is endless dark space that cannot be measured. It's ever expanding. But God tells us when he created this earth, he surrounded it by the waters. And just above those waters is his throne. So friends, again, whose words do you believe? So I hope that you can see that the goal here is to replace the word of God with man's word, which is really idolatry. And when we embrace their teachings, we are accepting a thus saith the Jesuits over a thus saith the Lord. The whole globe model is a complete mockery of God's creation. We talk about the Sabbath, which is centred on creation, yet how can we truly uphold the Sabbath when we have a Jesuit idol, a Jesuit idea of his creation in our minds? And we supersede this above the words of the Bible. We talk about the three angels' messages, which is a call for God's people to come out of Babylon, yet in the midst of our presentations and our logos, we are upholding a Jesuit symbol, a Jesuit idol. What a mockery. This is not the mind of God, which God is calling his people to have, which the 144,000 will have. No lie, no guile in their mouth. And in the face of this deception, we have the first angel's message, which tells us, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. No, everlasting gospel. This goes back to Genesis. This goes back to creation. 
And to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made the heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. The fountains of waters, this is taking us back to the great deep. The first angel's message is calling us back to creation. Genesis, the foundation. The fountains of the deep, the beginning. Satan notes if he can destroy the foundations caused doubt in Genesis, everything falls apart. Friends, believe his word. Jesus Christ, it is truth. He is truth and not a lie. Believe his words.